Mickey Francis, Martha Ray, and Mitzi Mayfair in Soldiers in Grease Paint. <laughs> This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Tonight, Cavalcade presents Soldiers in Grease Paint, starring Kay Francis, Martha Ray, and Missy Mayfair. These stars, together with Carol Landis, recently returned from a tour of the battlefronts of Europe and Africa under the auspices of the USO Camp Shows. They were the first to bring live entertainment into an actual theater of war. Our program tonight is not a play. It is a radio dramatization by George Corey, depicting some of the highlights of one of the most unusual theatrical tours in the history of show business. Ladies and gentlemen, the narrator of tonight's cavalcade, the popular screen actress and captain of our Soldiers in Grease Paint, Kay Francis. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we're going to tell a story that you made possible. It began here in America about a year ago when you began dropping nickels, dimes, and quarters into the USO collection boxes. That money made our tour of the war fronts possible. And tonight, Martha Ray, Mitzi Mayfair, and I want to bring you through this DuPont program a first-hand report of what your contributions brought to our fighters in Great Britain and Africa. To make the story complete, we should have Carol Landis with us. Unfortunately, she cannot be with us, as she was when we made one of the most unusual tours ever made by any group of actors. Well, we crossed the Atlantic by plane. Well, I can't tell you just how we went, but we were in that plane for five days and five nights. And when we got there, we had to come down through one of those famous London fogs the worst they had in 50 years. And somehow we found our way through the blackout to the hotel. And Bob, our unit manager, got us up to our room. Right this way, son. Thanks. Well, kids, here we are, end of the line. Oh, at last. Look, I'm numb. Tell me. How about you, Missy? I'm hungry, Kay. Yeah, me too. See, a hunk of bread in that bellboy's arm would make a swell sandwich. The bags in your rooms. Do you anything else now? Well, I got a nice hot cup of that song if you don't mind, Choppy. <laughs> It's a bit misty tonight, miss. Misty? You could stop a mattress with that fog. <laughs> oh, me for a good hot bath. Sorry, miss. It's after 10. What time restrictions, you know? Okay, skip it. Thanks, anyway. Yes, oh, boy. A real bed. Hey, look, kids. It works. Now, look, uh, I know you kids are awful tired, but... Who's tired? Just give me 48 hours sleep and I'll be as fresh as a daisy. Now, listen, Martha. I know that... Uh, the... Good night, Bob. Call me day after tomorrow. But, kids... You've got to rehearse tonight. Rehearse? Oh, look, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look, I know it's tough, but they may call us any day. Tomorrow, even. We've got to set the routine and... Oh, okay, Bob. Well, okay. there's a piano in the next room. But at least get us some food. Come on, girls, let's go. Uh, go over that wolf number, Martha, will you? Okay, Bob. But I may have to sing my first number from under an oxygen tent. Come in. Oh, hello, Charlie. Bob, it's not true, is it? If it is, you've got to be responsible. Now, sit down and talk sense, Charlie. What's wrong? What's the matter with those people in New York? Sending Francis, Ray, and Mayfair over here as an act. Now, wait a minute. Take it easy, you Charlie. You don't understand, Bob. They're going to be working in front of soldiers. Guys that are lonely, homesick, hungry for entertainment. And what do you send them? A dramatic star, a hoidman, a hoofman? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't worry, Charlie. You'll have entertainment. Entertainment. Can they sing? Well, they're... can they dance? Why, I have... Is the material any good? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh... Have you got an act? Yeah, sure, sure, Charlie. I think it's... Oh, you think? Fine. Fine. Huh? That's just dancing. Because you're due to put on a performance tomorrow night for the 93rd Bomber Squad. Huh? Good night. Charlie was right. The next afternoon, half frozen from a long drive, we shuffled into the little makeshift theater. It was a tin missing hut, a long, sausage-like affair that had once been a mess hall. A curtain was drawn across one end, and we could hear the excited voices of the flyers from the other side of it. We ran over our lines and put on our makeup. Now, you almost ready, Kay? Just about, Bob. I sure hope those kids don't sit on their hands. Tonight, I'm going to need encouragement. Now, look, girls, I, I might as well tell you. You've got a sort of uh, tough situation tonight. Tough situation? What's wrong, Bob? Well, the squadron was out over St. Nazaire today. 
His two crews didn't come back. How'd you, Bob? Don't worry, Bob. We'll pick up. Okay, girls, okay. Now remember the routine. Hey, open. Hey, Martha. Hey, you're in for your kids. Get going. You all set for the music? Oh, they're here. Oh, Miss Rain. Yeah, that's me. Telegram just came through from London for you. Oh, thanks, Corporal. Better not open it now, darling. We've got to get started. I'll be a second, case. All right, girls. Come on, let's go. Okay. Oh, Martha. Papa, honey, what's wrong? Come home, please. My sister just died. Oh, darling. Darling, wait. Miss Lee, tell Bob to hold the curtain. What did you say? No, don't, don't, Kate. Please forget it. Start the show. I can do it. Mother, I can go out there and tell them something or other. I could go on, didn't I? They do, don't they? Yes. Yes. Well, honey. Well, let's go. How do you men? Thank you, boys. Now, before we start our little show, I have an apology to make. As you know, we're, we're traveling under war conditions. So if we're not quite as neat and spick and span and well-pressed as we'd like to be, please forgive us. Oh, oh, oh thanks, boys. But you see, we girls came over here by plane. Oh, a great big bomber. And the trip itself wasn't very exciting, except for the pilot. He was the best-looking thing I've ever seen in my life. What a hunk of man. Say, say, I just thought, is it safe to fly a bomber with one hand? <laughs> no. No, but seriously. The Army's been marvelous to us. You know, I like soldiers. Yeah, really, I do. There isn't anybody else left to like. <laughs> you know, the only ones I'm really afraid of are those mess sergeants. The other day when we were eating, a, well, one of them came up to me and asked me how I liked the food. I told him it was delicious. So I took the bayonet away from my throat. <laughs> At ease, men. Now, look, I can't sing. Martha Ray's going to do that. <laughs> Wait a second. I, I can't dance. Missy Mayfair handles that department. <laughs> so, without further ado, here's our first act. That little measure smith of song, the screen star, Martha Ray. <laughs> the one and only human air raid siren. <laughs> hey, Ken, I wonder what it was about me that made the boys duck for cover. Ah, <laughs> oh, the boys like you, Martha. That is those that care for your type. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I get discouraged with boys. I had a boyfriend once, Kate. Well, what did you do with him? Ah, uh, he was grand. I'll never forget him. He had everything. Bill, looks, money. Everything except teeth. <laughs> no teeth? A detail. I took him around to my dentist and had him all fixed up. And then you know what? He left me. Yeah, that stale character left me flat. <laughs> well, the next time I saw him, he was surrounded by beautiful girls. You know what he did? Kay, he laughed at me. He laughed at me with my own teeth. <laughs> Oh, that's awful, Martha. Never mind, though, honey. You can still sing. Well, boys, would you like to hear a beautiful classical arrangement I brought with me? <laughs> what is it, Martha? There's a great day coming manana. There's a great day coming manana. It's a wonderful, wonderful dream. Everybody's in tow. Wheels are rolling in go. Out, out, go, go, manana. There'll be beer and petrol, manana. There'll be strawberries growing in cream. Everybody's been told we'll be rolling in gold. Out of the door, down the Now there'll be high time, high in the sky time. Have you soldiers pick your plow? There's a great day coming, manana. If manana ever comes. Where's our title and action for Missy Mayfair? Yeah. Well, hold your hat, boys. Here she comes. The dancing musical comedy star... Mitzi Mayfair. Hey, Mitzi. Mitzi Mayfair, where are you? Oh, I'm surrounded. Nine lieutenants and a sergeant. <laughs> it's a flank attack. Entrance music again, Bob. Now break loose, Mitzi, and come on our front. <laughs> Sorry, boys, I was detained. Mitzi, haven't I warned you about lieutenants? But, Kay, there are no wolves in the Air Force. <laughs> performance for the boys of the Army Air Corps was the greatest thrill any of us had ever had. Oh, but there were lots more to come. Night and day for the next five weeks, we gave hey, performance honey, up with performance. Jealousy, when they see you out with me, I don't blame them good as Oh, honey, stuck a road. Good, good, good.
gave anywhere from two to five shows a day at Army posts, Navy stations, air bases, hospitals. one day, we were mysteriously summoned back to London. There was a great hush-hush about our next show. It was a military secret. And the next thing we knew, we were going through our acts again, but at this time, in the Grenadier Guards barracks at Windsor Castle, Her Majesty the Queen had summoned us for a command performance. You're on soon, Mitzi. I'm so nervous. Well, Martha's going great. She shouldn't have any trouble. Bob says the Queen has her two little girls with her. You mean the Princesses Elizabeth and Margaret? Yes. Hey, which foot? What do you curtsy with? Well, the left foot, of course. Oh, yes. Hey, look. Here comes one of those guys with a muff on his head. Missy, that's one of the king's guards. Oh. I beg your pardon. I'm Tolford, sergeant of His Majesty's Guard. How do you do? You're Miss Kay Francis, the cinema star, I believe. That's right. You will pardon my forwardness, but uh, I have a little... Uh, uh, that is, you see, I was wondering if you would think it was too presumptuous. An autograph? Uh, if you please. Well, of course. That's my cue card. See you later. Oh, boy. Where do I tell them I played part of the split week at Winter Castle? Gee. Hey, Mitzi, better start warming up. Hey, Mitzi. How do you, how do you make with that curtsy business? Yes, sir. Oh, let me see now. <coughs> Martha, quiet. Hello. I'm Princess Elizabeth. You're Martha Ray and Mr. Mayfair, aren't you? I'm oh, glad to see you. Uh, what's wrong, Miss Ray? Did you hurt your ankle? My... Oh, oh, no, I, I was I was making with the, the... She's trying to curtsy. Please, Mitzi, break it off. Oh, me. oh, but that's not the way. It's very simple. Just bend your left knee. See? It's like this. Oh, I sure. It's easy, isn't it? Like this. Hey, look, it bends. Oh, hey, well. I, I hope you won't think me bold, Miss Mayfair, but I wanted to ask a favor of you. Surely, what is it, Your Royal Highness? We have been reading about America, and we were wondering if it would be possible for you to teach us the fundamentals... Of jitterbug. I am a... You are listening to Kay Francis, Martha Ray, and Missy Mayfair in Soldiers in Grease Paint on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Tonight, these Soldiers in Grease Paint are reporting their first-hand experiences to you, the American people, whose generous contributions to the USO made possible their now-famous trip to the fighting front. As our story continues, Kay Francis and Missy Mayfair are seriously ill from overwork and exposure. Martha Ray comes to visit them in the hospital. Well, how do you feel, kids? Well, I'm fine, but Missy's not so good. Well, Kay, I... <clears throat> I got some pretty terrible news for you. Are we supposed to be leaving? Mm-hmm. That's it. The plane's leaving for Africa tonight. Gee, I... I hate to think of going without you, kids. Oh, don't you worry, baby. You're not. What'll I ring for the nurse? But you two are sick. You can't do that, Kay. Did you ring, Miss Francis? Yes. Would you please get the doctor in here right away? Yes, Miss Francis. Now, listen, Kay. We are going to Africa. But, Kay, you can't. You might get pneumonia. Now, look, Martha. Mitzi and I are going with you tonight. Right, Mitzi? You bet we are, Kay. Kay, at least wait until the... Morning, Miss Francis. How are you, Miss Mayfair? Hello, Colonel. You, uh, sent for me? Colonel. Mitzi and I have to leave here this afternoon. Oh, that's impossible, Miss Francis. It's imperative that you two girls remain in bed at least another week. But the troops leaving tonight. Oh, I can't help that. You're in the hands of the army now. We say you stay. We're not staying. Miss Francis, Miss Mayfair is a very sick girl. She's running a fever. But, Doctor, I, I feel now, fine. Now, Doctor, we've learned a lot about what an army's like since we've been over here. We're not the only ones who've ever been sick. We've seen boys who were sick in lots of ways. Homesick and miserable with it. And yet their only thought was to get into action. Why, we've seen kids come back from a dog fight where they'd just watched their best friend killed. Take off again an hour later without a murmur. We've seen boys in this very hospital. So weak they could hardly stand up. And begging to be allowed to get back to their outfits at the front. Oh. Or maybe you think of us just as a bunch of glamour girls. But we like to think that we're troopers, too, with a job to do. Right now, our job's in Africa. Mm. Well, I think I see what you mean, Miss Francis. I guess we can arrange it. Good luck, and God bless you all. Well, we went. 
plane put down very quietly in a little Algerian town that was packed from one end to the other with American soldiers, including our hotel. We were counting on a couple of days' rest and doing our best to keep out of sight. But that very first morning, Martha and I were buying some stamps in the hotel lobby. Hurry, Martha. I am hurrying. How do you say airmail in Algeria? Oh, Martha, please, if these lads spot us. Oh, but be shy, huh? What would your agent say? But I'm tired. Uh, uh, too late. Uh, pardon me, miss, but are you, uh, I mean, you're Martha Ray, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, hey, fellas, yeah. look, Martha Ray. Hey, Francis. Francis. And Mr. Mayfair. Wait, wait a second. Well, we, we just got in. Oh, be a good sport. Just one number. Charlie will play for you. Very well. Well, what do you say, Martha? Okay, where's the piano? What did you sort us like to hear? Oh, bye, bye, bye. Mr. Five, bye, bye, five feet tall and it's five feet wide. He don't mention no more. Well, they packed the little hotel lobby coming in from the street to hear Martha sing. In the meantime, Mitzi had just gotten some mail. She was standing alongside of me reading a letter, and as she looked up, there was a big paratrooper staring down at her. I, uh, she got a letter. Yes, a letter from home. Home, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's swell. Letter can mean a lot out here. I mean, uh, when you're this far from home, can it? Boy, and how. You know, uh, Sometimes some of the fellas don't get a letter for months. If a ship gets sunk or something. I know. Yeah. Uh, Miss Mayfair, this may sound kind of funny to you, but... But what? Well, um, is there anything private in that letter of yours? Why, no, I don't think so. Well, then, would you let me read it when you're through? Sure you can, soldier. And then another day... Another little guy in a dirty leather jacket. A flyer. Stepped up to Martha Ray. Could I, uh... Could I talk to you a minute, Miss Ray? Sure. What's your name? Benton. Joe Benton. I'm from Traverse City. You ever been there? No. I guess that's one I miss. My dad's got a little farm right outside the city. It's a nice place. Mm -hmm. You're a pilot, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. A fighter squadron. I, uh... I was wondering if you'd do me a favor, please. Would you mind accepting these wings of mine? Well, well, really, Joy, that's swell of you, but, well, don't you think you ought to give them to your girl? I haven't got a girl. Oh. And, uh, well, it should be nice when I'm up there all alone to kind of think I had one, you see? Sure, of course I do. Thanks a lot, Joe. And now, well, <laughs> I sort of want to give you something, too. Me? Do you kiss me? Fighter pilot Joe was one of the pilots that escorted our bomber to the battle lines a couple of days later. We were wearing field uniforms now, with helmets and gas masks. Our plane was put down only a few miles back from the Nazi line. And our first show went on at dusk. The soldiers streamed into the little clearing that served as a theater. Their faces were dirty, streaked with sweat and mud, many of whom had been in battle that very day. And we could see men with bandages on their heads and on their arms. That didn't seem to make any difference. So Martha opened the show with a song and... Mama, don't want to make rhythm, just want to make music. I want... Uh, That's it. Jerry coming over again. All right, ma'am. Proceed quietly. Go to your proper stations. Sergeant, take the ladies to number one dugout. Yes, sir. If you'll just follow me. Well, it's the first time I've had them throw bombs at me for my singing. <laughs> right down these steps, sir. Watch that flashlight, Bill. Oh, sorry, sir. Now, just make yourselves as comfortable as you can. Are they after your headquarters here? That's about it. This is this their fifth try today? You all right, Missy? Sure, I'm fine. A little scared. You know, we took this shelter away from the Nazis only three days ago. What's that? Well, that's our fighters going after them. They'll be gone soon. Our fighters? Did, did they all go up? Oh, we're throwing everything we've got at them. Why? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice the wings. What's his name? Joe. You know him long? No. Not very. Been long enough. Ouch! That one was closed. Well, I hope your Joe has a quiet effect than this. You think it'll last much longer? Well, you never can tell. There goes the all clear now. What about the show? You feel up to it? Well, why not? Open the door there, bud. We want Missy. Come out. Not much down here. We got three of their hunkles. What about us? Two of our fighters. Oh. Do you... Do you know who they were? Not yet. Think they'll attack again? Well, not for a while, anyway. Well, what's the matter, Martha? You look like you've seen a ghost all over. Oh, I must be. Hello, Miss Ray. Joe. Oh, Joe. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. And now each of our stars has a personal word to say to you. Miss Mayfair? Honestly, our trip was the greatest experience of my life. I know you want to know just how the boys looked. Well, gosh. They look simply grand. The only thing they want more of is mail. So grab your pen, typewriter, pencil, or even lipstick, and write them. Do it tonight. Martha Ray, what about you? You were able to stay after the others came back. Is there anything special you'd like to say? Well, Mr. Bannon, no one asked to read my mail. Of course, it, it could be me. <laughs> but seriously, they do want to hear from you more than you imagine. I know we're supposed to conserve. We must save everything. But whatever you do, don't try to save on stationery. What about you, Miss Francis? Well, I'd like to add this. When you write to the boys over there, don't just go through the motions. Tell them the baby gained two pounds last month. That the baseball team just won another game. And that the fish are biting in the pond again. Oh, oh I know it sounds humdrum to you. But it won't to him over there. Until you've been there... You don't know what a V-mail letter means. And when you write, be cheerful. They've got their own troubles. Don't let them worry about you. So, write. Right, girls? Right. And here is Gain Whitman with the story of one of the most important chemicals being used in the war, methanol. What is methanol? Well, the zero-on antifreeze you drained out of the radiator of your car this spring and carefully put away for use next fall is based on methanol. But methanol in wartime, there's a lot more than keep the water in your car or in a Jeep's radiator from rusting and freezing. For instance, it's of great importance in the manufacture of plastics. The United States was just getting into its stride in the use of plastics when the war started. Now, in war, plastics research has been intensified, hundreds of vital new jobs for plastics have been found, and the Army and Navy are using them by the carload. Several kinds of plastic are made with formaldehyde, of both the urea and the phenol types. And formaldehyde is made from methanol. Without the chemical industry's development of synthetic methanol in large quantities during the past ten years, we just wouldn't have these formaldehyde plastics today in the enormous quantities so vitally needed. Gears and bearings for machinery, certain types of soldiers' helmets, mechanical and electrical parts for planes, tanks, trucks, and ships. All of these and many more things beside are made of tough formaldehyde plastics. And that's only the beginning of the story. Methanol is a chemical intermediate in the manufacture of many dyes. In the last war, America had to import dyes for soldiers' and sailors' uniforms. Now we make them ourselves. In part, we can thank methanol for that. Methanol is a raw material in the manufacture of certain military explosives. Methanol is a raw material again in the manufacture of lucite. Methyl methacrylate resin, the crystal clear plastic demanded for noses and transparent enclosures of thousands of bombing planes. Methanol is used in making both urea and phenol formaldehyde adhesives for plywood. Plywood that relieve critical metal shortages and are splendid structural materials in their own right. Stronger pound for pound than many steels. Methanol is used in connection with the manufacture of photographic film for aerial photography and in the making of lacquers, leather cloth, insecticides. Because of some quirk of the human mind, 
It's difficult for anyone to think of a liquid as a weapon. But here is a case in which a colorless, undramatic liquid pouring out of plants operated by the American chemical industry is a weapon in every sense of the word. Every bit as much a weapon as the newest fighting plane. The latest model tank in North Africa. As a weapon, methanol is now serving the nation. This is the wartime task assigned to one of DuPont's peacetime, better things for better living through chemistry. Before we tell you about next week's cavalcade, we want you to hear an important announcement from our government, an announcement that Miss Kay Francis will give. In order to provide our men overseas with proper nursing service, we must have 65,000 more student nurses in this country to release overseas nurses. Any other woman over 17 or 18, 235, in good health and with a high school education is qualified. The need is urgent. Tremendously urgent. If you are qualified, act at once by writing to Student Nurses, Box 88, New York City, or to your local nurses' organization. That girl is what the Navy men call her, the bulky, ungainly ship whose only glory is to supply fuel to the sleep destroyers and the battle wagons of the line. Next week, Cavalcade will bring a dramatization of the Saturday Evening Post story by Charles Rawlings and Isabel Layton. A saga of one fat girl, a fuel supply ship that escaped from blazing Pearl Harbor to stand by our fleet. Our star will be the popular screen player, Edward Arnold. Join Cavalcade next week when Edward Arnold stars in a dramatization of the Saturday Evening Post story, Fat Girl. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Robert Armbruster. This is James Bannon sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware.